This is a nice problem from the nice. 2023 Australian Mathematics Olympiad. As it's our national Olympiad, only about the top 100 students in Australia are invited to compete. Speaking of top Australian students, Terry Tao made our national Olympiad team at age 11 and now is one of the most influential and well-known mathematicians alike. But back to the problem. Mia is playing the following game. She writes the numbers 1, 2, 3 to n in some order on the sides of a regular n-sided polygon. Then, on each vertex of the polygon, she writes the sum of the numbers on the two sides that meet at that vertex. Mia wins if the n numbers on the vertices can be written down in some order to form an arithmetic progression. For which integers n3 or greater can Mia win this game? So, as we've shown, when n is equal to 5, she can win the game because 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 do form an arithmetic progression. Remember that means they go up or down by a consistent amount. But what about n equals 6, 7, 12, etc? Well, before investigating these cases, I would suggest, and this is good general advice, is to always start from the simplest case possible, and here that's n is equal to 3. And if you try it yourself, you'll find that any way you order 1, 2, and 3 on the sides, you would always get the sums of 3, 4, and 5 on the vertices, which are an arithmetic progression, so Mia wins. For n equals 4, you are going to have to do some trial and error, but if you try it, you'll actually find there's only three different ways to arrange the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and none of them give vertex sums which form an arithmetic progression. So Mia can't win when n is equal to 4. n is equal to 5, we showed before that she can win. So we have 3 and 5 where she can, and 4 where she can't. The next logical step is to try n is equal to 6. So feel free to pause the video, have a try for n equals 6, and see what you come up with. Otherwise, I'm going to show why n equals 6 is not going to work. So if we look at the arithmetic progressions that did work, we had 3, 4, 5, and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the common difference in both of those is 1. And does that have to be the case? Or could we have a difference of 2, for example? So in n equals 6, the minimum sum is 1 plus 2 is 3. If we go up by 2s, we get 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. And the problem with that is that largest possible sum when n equals 6 is 5 plus 6 is 11. So therefore the difference must be 1, because we're only allowed to use whole numbers, and anything bigger than 1 would not fit. So with a difference of 1, we could have a few different options, but which one would be the most likely? Well, if we look at the solution for n equals 3, the middle number was 4. For n equals 5, the middle number was 6, which suggests that for n equals 6, the middle number should be 7. Even if we look at the failed attempt for n equals 4, the middle number is not 5, but the average is 5. But the average couldn't be 5 if we had an arithmetic sequence uh, going up by 1, say 3, 4, 5, 6. The average would be 4.5. And you can see a similar thing is going to happen when n is equal to 6 because we have an even number of terms. So if it's the case that the average must be 7, but it cannot be, that would be enough to prove that there's no solution for n is equal to 6. But how can we prove that the average must be 7? To understand the average, we need to understand the total. And if we look at the total of the vertex sums, because every edge is counted twice, we're going to have exactly double the total sum of the original numbers. So the average of the original numbers is n plus 1 over 2, so the average of our sums must be n plus 1. But if n is even, the average of n consecutive integers cannot be an integer. But the integers must be consecutive, because if d was 2 or greater, the nth term would be too big. It would exceed the maximum possible sum. So Mia can't win if n is even. So that's good, but we're not finished yet because the question didn't ask when she can't win, it asked when she can win. So is it the case that she can always win when n is odd? So what we probably want to do is find a way to 
construct a solution that would always work for any odd value of n. It helps to look at the solutions we already have, and if we can do one more, say n equals 7, that should also help. Because if we look at the pattern of the numbers starting from 1 and going clockwise, skipping one number, we go 1, 2, 3, etc. By the time we've done a full lap, we've done just over half the numbers. Then we increase by 1 again, so that the sums, the pairwise sums, are also increasing by 1, forming an arithmetic progression with a difference of 1. So, in general, if we have our odd number n as 2k plus 1, we start with 1 and every second number go 1, 2, 3, etc. By the time we get round to k plus 1, we fill in the rest of the gaps with k plus 2, k plus 3, etc. The pairwise sums are going to increase from the minimum of k plus 2, increasing by 1 every time until the maximum of 3k plus 2, forming an arithmetic progression as required whenever n is odd. So there you are. I hope you enjoyed that problem. To me, it's nice because it's not an easy problem, but it's easy to get started uh, investigating what happens when n is equal to 3, 4, 5. Notice a pattern, make a conjecture, and then try to prove it. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this on nice math problems. And see you next time.